Alrighty, so I'm back in Kuala Lumpur for the second time. At this time, I have a bunch of personal free time to explore the city. So I have about uh, two and a half, three days before I fly to USA. So uh, first things first, so I just got a SIM card. Now I'm gonna go pick up some lunch at a very famous uh, street food vendor. Let's check it out. So I just checked out the street food vendor that sells a variety of uh, fried things like fried bananas and fried curry puff pastries. Not quite sure how I found him or where I saw them online, but uh, definitely worth checking out. All right, so I'm going right now to check out another famous Chinese kind of Malaysian fusion restaurant since the, uh, the Straits Chinese have been in Malaysia for, I don't know, thousands of years. And I also heard about another really good place here that's uh, on the same street, so I figured I'd go two for one get lunch at two places back to back. Yeah, let's check it out. Well, I just ate at this famous Sinki Chinese restaurant here in uh, Little India. And they have a, like a pork fried rice with three or four different flavors for types of pork from sauteed and grilled and uh, uh, pork sausage over with some uh, brown sauce, uh, fried rice and uh, Hot peppers. Definitely good. Definitely good. Walking along through a little India area, you just see on all sides of the road like some of the most delicious looking uh, Indian food, different curries and naan and all sorts of delicious looking food. So if you're going to be in this area of uh, Central, I uh, definitely recommend you check out some of the Indian food while you're in Little India. So since I'm in Little India, I figured I would go check out the famous Hindu temple right here, Sri Kanda Swami. Shri, Shri Kandaswami Hindu temple. Probably not pronouncing that right. As you can see here, it's under construction, but there's some really beautiful edifices underneath there. Kind of hard to see because they're all covered. They look super cool. I found another big temple that's like a block away from the one I was just at. I don't think it's the same building or same temple, but uh, it's also pretty cool and also under construction. Sun's at its zenith. It is incredibly hot right now. I'm probably gonna head back to my room, get out of the sun for a little bit, and uh, rest up for this evening. Something I've noticed that's quite odd as I'm walking around here is that there, I have passed no less than 10 blind people in the last 30 minutes um, walking around with canes. And it just makes me curious, is there a school for the blind in the area? Has there, does it have something to do with the climate, the food? I, their jobs, I mean, it, it just seems too common for it to be a coincidence. But I don't see a school for the blind, and yet there's another one right in front of me. I'm gonna do some more investigation because I'm curious as to how this is possible. I've never seen, outside of a school for the blind, I've never seen this many people, uh, this many blind people in one, it's like, four or five square block area. So, yeah, I'll get back to you on that.
Well, last night was Saturday night and I was here in downtown Kuala Lumpur. But I don't know if it was the pollution levels I'm just not used to. I just wasn't feeling that well. Uh, I took a big nap. I was really debating whether I should go out. Now it's Saturday night, downtown KL. Why wouldn't you go out? Well, I decided that it would be better to save up my energy because I rented a motorbike today, which according to everyone I've talked to was impossible to rent in KL, but I found one. And I am now out and about exploring downtown and I'm currently here at the National Mosque of Malaysia, which is a very, very impressive mosque. I don't think they'll let me go inside, but uh, some of this historic area here in downtown KL is absolutely gorgeous. These very, I don't know how you describe them. They're uh, you know, kind of like that Middle Eastern looking architecture here in Southeast Asia, but it should be pretty fun. I'm gonna go walk around a bit and uh, check out uh, what I can find. Okay, this is definitely one of the best things I've had in a while. A lamb burger and a mango drink. I am in melee heaven. After a uh, pretty harrowing motorcycle ride uh, with no GPS, I made it here to the uh, Batu Caves. Yeah, let's check it out. Well, inevitably, there's a traffic jam on the stairs. Uh, hundreds of people trying to walk up some very steep stairs. It invariably leads to a bunch of old people and young people and everyone else slowing everyone else down. And since I am surrounded by a swarm of Chinese tourists, and so crowded, it really does feel like I'm back in China. But I'm glad I'm not. The grandeur of this place is really hard to capture on video. Well, this place certainly wasn't easy to find, but I'm here now. So I'm just sort of following some trail into the jungle and up the side of a mountain, which I assume leads to a waterfall. I think one of the most frustrating things about Malaysia is the language is, they use the Latin alphabet that we're all familiar with. You know, English, Spanish, Italian, French, same letters, but the words are, make no sense. <laughs> and they don't have any sort of English translation. So it's just like, if you don't know what the word temple is in Malaysian, if you don't know what the word park is in Malaysian, it's like, just guess. <laughs> and so, with no cell phone mount on the bike, just kind of using GPS when I can and winging it, 
down the highway. I think I finally made it. Let's go check it out. Should be cool. The amount of monkeys here is obscene. They're literally everywhere. Hey, mama. Hey, baby. Oh, you're a cutie. Pretty hot and humid. So I'm really looking forward to jumping in a nice cold waterfall here in the mountains, just north of Kuala Lumpur. So, after a nice hike, I'm ready to get wet. And this is where I thought my adventure would end, but boy was I in for a rude awakening on my return trip back. Well, I'm back on U.S. soil for the first time in 18 months. Got one more flight to catch, and then I am finally home to Charlotte, North Carolina. Right now I'm on uh, 25 hours of uh, traveling. So just two more hours left. So I've just spent 24 hours in Phuket Immigration Detention, and I am now being deported from the country. I have been personally VIP escorted to the plane. I'm the first one on and they have taken my passport to ensure that I don't get off this plane. So, you wanna find out why? <laughs> Let's find out why. So I didn't even know this was possible, but I was flying back home to Thailand, Phuket, where I live. I landed, I get to immigration, Immigration officer looks at my passport, looks at me, looks at my passport, calls the superior officer over, and he says, come with me. I say, okay, what, what seems to be the problem? He's like, I need you to come with me, sit down. And I say, what's up, what's going on? He said, oh, you have too many visa entries on arrival, uh, you have to go back to Kuala Lumpur. And I said, what? Uh, I didn't know this was even possible. So I was basically locked in immigration jail for 24 hours in Phuket, waiting for a flight to go back to Kuala Lumpur on the same airline that I flew in on. Again, I had no idea this was even possible. I knew that you could be denied, but I didn't know that you could be denied for something as simple as having too many visa on arrival entries. And there's no rule, there's no law that says that, hey, you can only have this many. It's basically an arbitrary thing. The Thai immigration office decided that, hey, uh, we're tired of people coming in for free. We want to make sure they get a tourist visa before they arrive and uh, they pay the, the thousand baht or 30 US dollars because if there's thousands of tourists coming every month, that's you know thousands of dollars for the Thai government. So it looks like I'll be spending at least a few more days back in Kuala Lumpur. Oh yeah. Oh man, this uh, lemon mojito drink is amazing. <laughs> so good. Mm. I'm so refreshing right now. Well, I'm standing outside the Kuala Lumpur Planetarium, and I guess I'm going to go check out a show because there's one that starts in about 30 minutes. So I haven't been to a planetarium since I was a kid. I'm super looking forward to this. I hope it's really awesome. I watched a half hour movie on solar storms and heliophysics. It was pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> it's also nice just to get out of the heat, go inside the AC and enjoy some uh, nice dark room for a little bit. So I'm now in the um, big Central Park area of Kuala Lumpur and uh, we're gonna go check out some of the other stuff here in the park. I think there's a, I don't know, well we're we'll gonna check it out and find out what there is. I don't know the name of this park here in downtown KL but, uh, oh my hair is out of control. But uh, it's pretty cool. A nice little skyline view. There's some really cool architecture and some uh, overhanging, uh, I don't even know what you'd call them, some sort of like lattice structures or porticos or 
I don't know, you pick the word. But yeah, it's a cool park. Well, this is pretty cool. As soon as I got to this park, literally I walked under the archway that was the entrance. There's a big boom of thunder. I'm like, uh-oh. Walked another 10 feet, boom. Walked about another 30 yards and it starts raining. So, pretty cool park. Uh, the rain's keeping the heat down, but of course the humidity's even higher. No idea what the name of this park is, but it's uh, some mountainous park in the middle of Kuala Lumpur. And I gotta say, uh, if I lived here, I would certainly come here and go hiking on a weekly basis. Because this park is really cool. Monkeys, beautiful birds, uh, very mountainous terrain, through the jungle, pretty cool. This thing is really cool. A suspension bridge in the middle of the jungle. What a cool idea. <laughs> okay, that was awesome. That was definitely one of the coolest things I've seen in a city park. Super cool. A uh, little sketchy, but uh, surprising that uh, something like that exists in a park like this, uh, just because of the sheer uh, liability. <laughs> but, uh, hey, Southeast Asia, you know what I mean? Well, today is hopefully my last day here in Kuala Lumpur. I'm going back to the Thai embassy to pick up my visa and passport today. And then I have to go to the Malaysian immigration office to get a special entry stamp since the entry stamp was on my original passport, not my new passport. I'm hoping I can get all of this done today uh, and that will allow me to fly back to Phuket first thing tomorrow. So although I've had fun here in Kuala Lumpur, I do miss being home. And I've been here now for almost two weeks, uh, you know, five days before I left to go to the US and then almost another 10 days uh, since I've been back. So um, definitely looking forward to leaving and going home. So I was finally able to get my tourist visa to Thailand and actually leave Malaysia and enter Thailand. But I really enjoyed my time back in Kuala Lumpur, even though this is now my fifth time going. I have seen enough of KL to last me for quite a while. As much as I love it, honestly, I hope I don't go back for a while because I've pretty much done everything I can do. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, comment, share, and stay tuned for another exciting adventure in Anang Bay, Thailand. Thanks for watching and see you next time.